It's your first AEW Dynamite review of 2022. It's your first AEW Dynamite review on TBS. And it's also a special COVID-infected COVID AEW Dynamite. Both members of Fog Wrestling, believe it or not, both have got COVID. But we're not selling it. We're not jobbing it like the Brooklyn Brawler. We're here to fucking bury people like Hulk Hogan. So um, let's get into the show. By the way, I want to point out. We've got a black champion now, so Tony Khan is no longer racist. So, yes. Uh, Tony Khan here, you know, two birds, one stone. New title. But he you know, did take the belts off two Mexicans. Yeah, fucking deport him. Well, I wonder what they're going to do. I mean, Felix won't be able to compete. Broken arm. I guess he can mow Tony Khan's lawn in the meantime. But let's go through the show then. We kicked <laughs> off with, uh, what did we have? It was Jericho. Jericho making his return. I think we actually made it a week ago. But he made his, like, I don't know, first <laughs> legit. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the fuck. Promo. Promo. He made his first fucking, yeah, his first awful. speech in three months. Um, two oh, guys gosh. came out called Extreme 2.0 or something like that. 2.0. Something point oh. Two, so two, there's two of them and they're called point oh. What's the fucking um, They came out and Jericho was, he said one of them's got like a square head. Uh, like a sticky note, a stamp it or something. <laughs> then it note. posted the other one's pinhead. The other one's pinhead. Then he had a, a chat, and they're like, "Don't you can't call me squarehead." And the guy's like, "Don't call him." I mean, what? This is something AEW fans would have a go at Dara E for doing. Uh, it just sounded like like a fucking Disney thing. Oh no, I didn't. Oh yes, you did. Oh no, I, you know it was, it was like the whole I Randy. I watched a pish fucking wrestling show, and I wish I didn't. Randy, what was that? Who was it? Christian and Archie for then? Randy, R Riley, Randy, <laughs> little Jimmy, little that was Jimmy. Not funny though. Uh, yeah, this this wasn't funny. Um, this was pish. Uh, Jericho's calling them pinhead and squarehead. And literally the only thing that could have been the, the worst to me, was they look like Kingston save. Yeah, they look like two dickheads to me. Um, Jericho gets the bat. Some other guy comes out, attacks Jericho. Jericho gets beat up three and one. And then Eddie Kingston with two bombs make the save. I don't know who the guys were Eddie Kingston were. No. But uh, Ed, Eddie Kingston came out and that Probably was the it. same guys Jericho helped last week. Um, I don't know who they were. Well, last week, was it not? Spicy, oh yeah, um, uh, what's the, uh, spice, uh, uh, spicy meal. Um, <laughs> uh, the, 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 the LAX ripoffs. Hi there, hi. Yeah, that's yeah. Nice. yeah. yeah. So yeah. see this whole oh, the, 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 there's a lot of shake. Cause I think the LAX proved that right. It's not that they were ever the greatest team, but in, in TNA they were good and had that fucking great theme song. You know, all Latin American us. And the gunshots at the start. And they're good and, fucking razor's edge. You know, uh, homicide like was pure killing people. Like the gringo killer. Exactly. I mean, if I imagine if you had a move called the end killer, like, and you know, Tony Khan would be racist. But it's all right to be a gringo. It's all right to be a gringo killer. But um, yeah, now, these these are just two fucking Mexicans called LAX. It, it would be like getting four. It's like calling those new guys the new four horsemen. Absolute shit. Mm -hmm. Who is it? Tully's with you know Sean Spears. I mean, it's nothing to do with the horse. It's just a name. It's like, look at the NWO and WWE, <laughs> you know, and it's just like, it's going it to absolute shit. It was at the beginning, and then it just became, I don't know what the fuck it became, we're in the middle of that, like, but, yeah, what a, what, what a way to kick off the fucking show. Aye, but I'm, I'm just not digging LAX, I mean, no. like, look at NWO with Hogan, Nash Hall, and then, you know what I mean, a couple months later, NWO, <laughs> big show, book a TX pack. Just doesn't really have the no. same fucking ring to it, does it? Uh, yeah, shit way to start the show. Then we moved on to, I believe it was Malachi Black. Uh, it was Malachi. Taking on Brian Pillman Jr. That was it. Um, <laughs> someone, or some chick at ringside with an eye patch on. Don't know what happened with her. I'm assuming Malachi Black did something. Who knows? Uh, uh, Hillary or something her name was. Julia Hart. Uh, Julia Hart. Is she related to the Hart family? I don't know. Probably is. Boring bastard. <laughs> um, what's his name? Who? Mark I. Black? No, the other one. B Pillman? I, so Brian Pillman Jr. goes for like a springboard manoeuvre. Fucks it up. <laughs> falls in his arse. And it, <laughs> I don't know if this was a botch, but it, if it was a botch, it's probably like one of the best botches you could do. Could it actually look good? It transitions straight into Malachi finish. Black's uh, finish, which is like a super kick, and that beats everybody. Yet the Young Bucks had about twenty super kicks in a match in, in the first half. So I don't, I don't get it. Like it's like back in the day when Shawn Michaels was doing the super kick, <coughs> people stopped doing it. You know what I mean? You're like Stevie Richards couldn't even have that as his finisher. Yeah, all these pricks. Yeah, the Young Bucks have super kicks. It's like just a. A super kicks to name's a punch. I know. Or a, or a slap. I mean, Ric Flair goes to the, the chop. 
The Ooh. chop. I mean, that's what a uh, super kick to the those guys may as well be. A Ric Flair chop a slap. Fucking wise up. I apologise. I need slapped for that. Uh, then we had Mr. Mayhem continuing to wreak havoc, which I believe is Warlord. He, yep. he power bombs some guy that I've never seen before. Also, Malachi Black. Uh, he's the heel, but he was he was looking strong against four guys and he just did the whole black disappear thing absolute piss. yeah so Malachi Black's about to come up and beat up Brian Pillman Jr. after the match and, and three guys run it to make the save it's like <laughs> how can these word, to be honest, but... it was the tag champs and someone else like how can... was their manager Joey Garcia or something who cares Danny Garcia I mean, I who, who cares Wardlord power bombs a guy Five times, five fresh. times too many. Yes, let's move on. Um, next up, though, we had Jade Cargo becomes the first ever TBS Women's Champion by defeating that freak show looking bastard Ruby Riot. Not a lot to say she here. Reminds me of that black woman who used to be with Scott Steiner and Petey Williams and TNA. I thought you were going to say Shanika. Shanika, is that who it is? No, she was the one that managed the Bash and Bros. Well, that's the same person. No, it's not. Oh, it is. is it? Aye. What? Well, it's not the same person here, but the same person who was with Steiners. Was it actually? Aye. Did they know that? There you go. You go. You, you learn something every day. Um, this match pretty sloppy. You know, moves Just didn't like look every that good. This company it, shit. She hits her finisher off the top rope. I mean, and it took ages to do because they had to make make sure they had it lined up safely. And then when they did it, it was just like it, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. Uh, anyway, new champion. So yep, I don't want to hear it that black people don't get pushed in, in AEW or there's no champions that look like you because now you've got a black champion but it probably won't be enough because you'll probably want a, a pair of black tag team champs you'll probably want a new black world heavyweight champ yeah uh, you'll need a new black TNS champ or TNT champ or whatever so um what's what Taz's this belt called FTW belt and yeah, uh, probably the holder of that will need to be black as well we'll need to the white we'll, we'll need to replace JR and Shafani because they're two old white men we'll need to get two black guys on commentary maybe when 100% of the AW roster is black and uh Tony Khan gives up complete ownership of the company to George Floyd's fucking nephew then <laughs> then maybe AW will be non-racist and diverse you know when it's 100% black and, and nothing else that's when it's going to be diverse so, uh, aye, all you guys in the comments, fuck you all. Let's move on, though. Talk about Jade shit, Cargill, though. new champ. Yes, we had uh, Jim Ross sitting down with Serena Deeb, and this was... Right, see Serena Deeb, not even going to waste time here. The only thing she's fucking known for, right, is getting her... her head and, uh, 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 and let's be honest, most people only know that's who it was. No. Right? Um, ben Hameen can say she's the best women's performer of all that's time. Like came from a, a fucking a, shitty rat ass. Along, along with Mickey James, but he's obviously... You know, he's obviously got a personal connection with two of them or whatever, he works with them. I mean, that's lame, right? Just because I work with someone, I wouldn't say oh, they're the greatest ever. I mean, I think it's very hard to make a case for someone who hasn't held like, a world title to be the best ever. But see, for a woman not to, a woman not to hold it, considering the fact they've all held it. Yeah, uh, I mean, even if Ben Hameen turned around and said, well, you know what, she's a pretty good in-ring worker in this, and that she probably deserved a bigger push. And I mean, you could accept that, but when he, see when he comes out and says, oh, she's the best of all time... And her and Mickey James, and I'm like, they're, they're, I couldn't tell just you not. what she did after the Straight Edge Society for like ten years. <sighs> Fucking retired, Ring of Honor. Who knows? But anyway, she says she's the best. No one can come close to her. She asked Jr. Is there anyone on her level? And Jr. said no. I find that astonishing. I find that astonishing how much like they fucking hype up Britt Baker and CM Punk's put her on the four pillars and all this stuff. Yet apparently Britt Baker's no, not even close to Serena Deeb's level. When Britt Baker's a champ, and I don't even think Serena Deeb's actually won a match on AW, so uh bit weird. There we go, guys. Awful. Waste of a minute 47. Next up, probably a waste of 7 minutes 03. We had MJF against some guy. I can't remember his name. Um, out comes Punk. Punk hits him with a GTS. Good night. DQ, that guy. Crunchy, I think it was. Round. Was it? All right. I think that was his name. Oh, that's all right. All right, fair enough. <laughs> Can you feel the crunch? <laughs> Uh, well, he felt, when you're hungry. he felt the crunch when uh, Punk hit the GTS. So G Punk just randomly GTS this guy to get MGF DQ'd, and then they have a they have a war of words. MGF says you're only as good as paper. He was talented enough to hold uh, yeah, main event mania. Yeah. Punk M starts greeting. Yeah, MGF says he might decide to go in main event mania. Punk says if you think the grass is greener on the other side, go ahead. He makes fun of like WWE being on non-pay-per-view and the fact that they host Wrestlemania over multiple nights um I mean let's be honest Wrestlemania 
still draws in fucking hundred times more than AEW's best pay per view. I mean, AEW don't even, you don't even know what their main pay per view is. I know it's a fucking mess. At least you know what TNA is. It's bound for glory. You don't. I can't even tell you what AEW's <laughs> bound for fucking failure these days. Like, but, I, mean... <laughs> I can't tell you what their main pay per view is. I feel like every time there's a war of words between Punk and MGF, MGF's getting the better of it. And any time Punk opens his fucking mouth, WWE has to be mentioned. Yeah, but it's lame. Why can't you just let it go? PG Punk. On and, and, and he laughed at the thought of MGF thinking he could main event a mania, but I mean, if you had to bet your money, money on one of those guys to make you would go with MGF, wouldn't you? Yeah. Guy's got another fucking 20 odd years. What was Punk Punk's got? Punk's got five and it's going to be in this shithole. It's not, it's not even the fact that I think McMahon wouldn't bring Punk back. It's, I just think Punk's a stubborn bastard that wouldn't go back. I, know. I think if AEW were to business tomorrow, Punk would just retire again and sit at home and bitch and complain. Maybe go with strike force and... I had a good get, six months. Get battered a couple of fights. I don't know. But would it, well, if Bret Hart can go back to WWE, man, you'd think anybody could go back, but... Uh, Jeff Jarrett went back. I don't, well, I, think, I, I don't think Jeff Jarrett's bitter, that's the thing. I think Jeff Jarrett's kind of more of a kiss-ass, level-headed guy. I don't think Scott Stano will go back. No. But Bret Hart's very bitter. I'm actually surprised Bret went back. But here, we're not talking about... Actually, maybe we could uh, make a video of top 10 most uh, surprising returns for bitter bastards in WWE. Uh-huh. But anyway, my MGF says he'll face Punk next week, but only it won't be him, it'll be Warload. I actually thought MGF and Warload had went their separate ways. Why is Warload being managed by Sean Spears? But then MGF can just... Book matches. Yeah, I don't get that. Who knows, guys, but this is what actually kicked off the show. But at least it was a good... It was a, it's a heel thing, because like, it wouldn't make any sense for MGF just to put himself in a match against Punk, so you know, it makes it sense. It is a heel thing, but AEW is that much of like a shit. It's like, why the, why is he even doing heel tendencies, you know what I mean? It's like, that works when you actually fought I know, but it, at least Punk's like, oh, the difference is between me and Piper is we'd fight anybody. At least, at least they're going with the whole face heel thing. You know what I mean? Like, I give, I give, then, I give them that. But then they're like, but then like they're like it's fake. Like the next sentence, it's just fucking stupid. I know, but I mean, I gotta give them a bit of credit where credit's due. Um, then that we had about kicked off the show, right? We had Hangman Page versus Danielson. Two, uh, two. two. They, had, they had their match a couple weeks ago. It went to a time limit draw. In the event of a draw tonight, there was judges at ringside, big Mark show. Henry, Big Show, and some other guys. actually had more star power than judges ringside. than the fucking ring. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, was, it looked like a good match, you know. Well, it was a good match, I'm not going to lie, it was alright, yeah. It was blood. A lot of blood. I mean, I think that's what WWE lacks massively. Like, you just... Because if you knew you were going to get blood in a WWE match, it would just make the matches so much better. I don't know why I see a Hell in a Cell match with blood. It just doesn't do nothing <laughs> no. for me. Uh, anyway, Hangman Page, eventually... Picks up the win with the Lariat clothesline. Uh, looked like Daniel was going... I mean, Daniel had a pile driver at one stage, and JR was like, oh, this could be it. <laughs> in the most depressed tone ever. But this wasn't even the worst one, because he actually hits his finisher, and you think, well, fuck, this is the end of the match. Both covered in blood, this could be it. But JR's like, oh, he's hitting the running knee. One, two, oh. Poor, G- yeah. poor JR doesn't want to be here, right? He wants to be he wants anywhere but. <laughs> he anywhere to... fucking but. <laughs> but the money must be good for Tony Khan, because he's here. I mean, JR knows. JR knows this isn't fucking wrestling. I mean, I'm sure JR looks at the other show and he's like, it's pressure that it is. I mean, Roman Reigns. No, that, that's what gets me right about Punky. He says that, oh, they release you. See, in WWE, they get rid of fucking people that are dead weight and it's just costing them money. Tony Khan happily fucking hires people just for the sake of it. Uh, yeah, I mean. This company, it won't. The only re- is he if Tony Khan's dad. Brock Lesnar could murder Stephanie and Triple H and he's still going to get released. So. Yeah, you know, I mean, it is what it is. It's just a if you're a st- if you're if you're good, you, the fuck you are. If you're good, you won't get released. If you're fucking, if you if you're if, a if, bum, fuck if, off. If you dress up as Superwoman and, and cry about people messaging your sister on Instagram, then you know you're probably <laughs> you get really you're probably expendable. Aunt and Dackle, it might be you. <laughs> it might be. Oh, is it like the one about? I remember. I can't remember who it was, but someone says because remember Bray Wyatt was off. Um, with the death of Brody Lee and that, and he was taking, he said, Bray Wyatt said he couldn't, um, I don't know, mental health. I remember someone saying McMahon's going to release him. And then when McMahon did release him, it came as a huge shock, and I'm thinking, Not really. You know what I mean? So, there you go, I mean, God, McMahon, McMahon doesn't believe in mental health. <laughs> See, McMahon wants to make, could you imagine the height of the attitude there, McMahon's competing against WC, and Austin says, McMahon, I need, I need three months off here, mental health. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> what? Uh, what? Hey, Steve, just you said it. Austin has taken his mental health and went home. <laughs> I mean, what? Not a fucking chance. Anyway, okay, that one died in the ring and he continued to show 10 <laughs> seconds later. So, whoa. And no, we're if, not using that ambulance, bro. <laughs> we're not using that one. If he continues the fucking show after Owen's deed, he's hardly going to prove someone to not show up to work for mental health. <laughs> Absolutely fucking not. Anyway, this was a good match. Then we move on to um, main event. Tag titles on the line. The uh, Lucha Brothers versus uh, Jurassic Park or Jurassic Express. Jungle Boy and the big gimp with the mask ain't that big, but just looks half big because everyone else is small. Well, he's the same size but, as Christian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's big, this guy. Um, in the uh, decent match, they win. Uh, Luchasaurus chokes slams Felix to the ring apron to the outside. Breaks his arm. Breaks his arm. That's him out for three months. <laughs> Good riddance. Um, then with Jungle Boy in the ring, and he rolls up Pentagon Junior. I thought they maybe would have had a better finish here, you know, they win the first tag team titles and it's a <coughs> and it's a roll up. I mean I've not seen a roll up can't be good, but I mean a roll up is kinda a When you've a choke slam through a table that breaks someone's arms, but in the same match someone gets beat with a roll up, it kinda just cheapens the fucking arm. Yep. Uh, actually, I know it wasn't supposed to happen, like, but it happened. Yep. So, well, at least, and I, I don't know, see, to me it's retarded. I mean, Pentagon's arms down, and then as soon as the ref hits the free count, he sticks his arm up. Like, why not just do that at one? I mean, you know, like, there's no leverage on the guy, so it didn't make me any sense. But here, I mean, I get a decent match, table spot, broken arm spot, you know, it is, it is what it is. It wasn't supposed to happen. Every match was a botch. Um, yeah. Uh, AW Dynamite, what are you giving it? AW Dynasty. Well, every match was a botch. All right, there was a few title matches. Um, I, 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 you can see they went all out here, like, can't you? I mean, kind of. It's just all out, though. It's not good. No. I mean, you, you could make, you could put every title on the line, and it doesn't mean it's going to be a good show. I mean, I'd fucking rather one good title match than just throwing it. A fucking every... mess. Yeah. Uh, I'll give it a. Uh, wasn't my favourite show of the week. I'll, I'll give it a, a, a two. Maybe uh, I'll give it a two. Uh, maybe, maybe a three. No, I'll no, stick with a two. No, because it was a botch in every match. Literally. Aye. And the promos were fucking awful, literally. Yeah, pretty It shit. wasn't that guy from last week, can't remember. Yeah, it was Dan... Dan... Lev, Dan... Glenn Durant, or whatever the fuck his name is. Aye. Yeah, is that a bit like Glenn Durant? I want to see him first. He's, he's like Glenn Durant without the stroke. I want to... I want to see him first. He's Brandy Rhodes. That's what I want to see. I know. See when that's your... Prof see when that's the best match AEW's got going. You've got to wonder. You be a black belt, but I'm a black bitch. As long as, at least it wasn't the white guy that said that. Anyway, guys, there you go. Two out of ten. Let us know what you thought down below. AW, they've got a new black champ. None of you racist guys can complain anymore about this lack of diversity. Um, nice. Nah, Tony Canny. He's shite, but he's not a racist, right? There you go. I'm not racist. Till next time. Peace. He's just a racist.